Welcome back, everybody. My guest tonight is a Grammy Award-winning singer and rock and roll Hall of Famer who has sold over 130 million albums worldwide. Please welcome back to a late show, John Bon Jovi. Hello, Stephen. Good, Good to see you. It's just a name you can't say calmly. You have to go, John Bon Jovi. You got to fill an arena when you say that name. That's it. Good evening, John Bon Jovi. How, how are well, you? How are you doing? How is COVID treating you? Like everybody else, you know, I mean, uh, it's been up and down, but I think overall we're all pretty good. How about yourself? Um, uh, listen, I feel lucky. I, I have a job. I get to come in here and sort of get the emotions out every day. I got to say, you look better than you have in 20 years. Do, do you feel better than you have in 20 years? <laughs> I do, as a matter of fact. I feel better than I have in 20 years. I was just going to drive around for a while and wave at people because I look so good. I, I need some advice. I need some advice. One thing that COVID has done for me is that I got these luscious locks now. I haven't, you know, I've, I've got a little trim around the ears, and that's about it in the last seven months. You've got the I best hair. Tell, and America, your hair had its own tell. induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I understand. I understand, but you, you, you got sir, advice? When, as we went on together, I saw you do, like, the head wave. You, you've got it all down. I think you're ready for the stage, or at least, like, what, like an REM reunion or something. You could, you're ready oh, yeah, to join sure. I can play mandolin. <laughs> I'm ready for losing my religion. <laughs> I, I see you. You're, you're working the mirror. You're working. Your, this is a whole different Colbert now. I've never. I, it's been a long time since I've been able to do this. My wife likes it. Don't good, you like it? Good. Good. She's right. He, she's right here. She's right here. She's with the, the camera and the lights at the same time. She can't wait for you to go back to the studio. Exactly. You, <laughs> she can do it all. Hey, um, last time we, we were together, you were talking about Soul Kitchen which has yeah. served hundreds of thousands of meals, you know, since you started. It's, it's your nonprofit community restaurants that have a pay it forward model. As we talked about last time, since COVID started, have, have they just been busier than ever? Absolutely busier than ever. As most people are aware, if you had a job on March the 1st, by March 15th, you know, many people across this great land were looking for a paycheck. And so they were coming to Soul Kitchen for the first time. And, uh, and we made a point of remaining open when most restaurants could not. We were deemed essential. And, uh, and the basis, as you know, is volunteers. But because we couldn't have any volunteers, I was the dishwasher. And, but we, we, were, we were so busy. We had to start a food bank on Eastern Long Island. I mean, it's been kooky. The need is, is dire. I heard about the food bank. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if you'll be able to see this in your shot. But oh, yeah. this is, I think that's you. Is that is that you starting up the food back bank? What's going on here? Well, uh, I was working there May, June, July, August into September. But uh, we were we were supplying the food to seven pantries. So I was working there three days a week. Out of that, can can you see things like the smashed finger, which now doesn't play the guitar, you know, any good? Not that it ever did anyway. What did you drop? What did you drop on your hand, John Bon Jovi? Uh, case a case of big 40 plus pounds of soup <laughs> it really hurt <laughs> how so important between are the fingers for guitar older, playing are the fingers I, really I, essential I, for guitar playing john nah, not not the way i play you know i can just get by <laughs> but between that and the hernia operation and wait and, you had you a know, hernia operation i hurt myself bad you know, there's certain things that lead singers aren't meant to do. Manual labor is really <laughs> high on the list. <laughs> but I, I was there. You know, I was there at the Soul Kitchen five days a week in March, April, May. And then beginning of, of March, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, May, we went out east and we were there three. It was busy. Well, yeah. you're, you're a good man to do it, John Bon Jovi. And I'm not surprised because of who your mentor is. Tell me. Talk about this woman. I love, I love, I love, spoiler alert, it's a nun, but I love nun that stories. Tell, tell me about your, your, your mentor the, here. My mentor, the one and only Sister Mary Scullion, who you should know, told me that she has a nun crush on you. Now, I, I've heard a lot in my day, but I don't think anybody. Hello, sister. <laughs> God be with you. <laughs> Dominus Fabiscum, sis. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Mary is the Michael Jordan of the issue of homelessness. 
this. I met her some 15 years ago in Philadelphia. Um, we, we, we met when our little teeny foundation at the time were interested in refurbishing a row home. And I really wasn't being a wise guy, but what I said was, how much would it cost to refurbish the block? And she thought like, who is this guy? Why is he talking like that? And I said, because if we could do a block, we could do a neighborhood. If we could do a neighborhood, who knows where this could roll? So we have been joined at the hip and she's taught us everything we've known. And since then, we've built nearly a thousand units of affordable housing. We have the three restaurants, we have the food bank. But Sister Mary, she's a, what's called a, a sister of mercy. So she doesn't wear a habit. Sure. But she's gone on from being in jail four times for helping people on the street and fighting for the homeless to being sure. one of Time Magazine's now uh, 100 most influential. I, I told her when we met, I said, sister, when you're with me, we're going to have the e-ticket to Disneyland. And, and it's been unbelievable. Did you go to Catholic school? Did you have, were you taught by nuns? Yes, I was in, I was out, I was in and I was out. You know, I was Whose idea was it for you to be out? Was it yours or the nun's idea to be out? It was, it was, it was a mutual agreement. But I, you know, when I was asked recently, tell me about your time in Catholic school and grade school, I said, sure, I can remember the priest picking you up by the ears in the playground and telling you, you know, don't run, uh, you know, getting whacked by the nuns. I mean, I had all those childhood memories. I was an altar boy. Uh, I did hey, all that stuff. Me too. Me too. You how, were? how long were you an altar boy? Long enough that, you know, my grandparents would, would pay for the, the bakery goods on Sunday. You know, it's like, sure. I did it for a year, maybe two. Did you, what, did you, did you bring the cross in? Did you actually go get the, the, the gifts? What, were, what was your favorite thing to do? Because there are a lot of different roles up there. many of us, you had to do everything, if I remember oh, correctly. Sure. You know, and you do one, more than one mass on a Sunday because, who, you know, Joey didn't show up and John sure, was Joey. there. Joe is Joe is Joe is going straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the crumb cakes from my nan and pop, so you know it was a deal I had. <laughs> um, did you? It's it's a stage. The altar is, you know, it's very it's very presentational. Did that give you a little taste of being in front of a crowd as a kid? That might be a stretch, my friend. That might be a stretch. I got Catholic guilt out of it. Oh, I good. got all that kind of stuff with it, but you know. Uh, I, I can't even tell you that I ever had a sip of the wine, but I was a good altar boy, and uh, I did what I did. Good. Well, good, good. I never served a perfect <laughs> mass. I was, a, I was an altar boy for 11 years, and my goal was always to serve a perfect mass where the priest didn't have to ask for anything. Never did it. Never did it. In 11 years. <laughs> 11 years. No. There's always something he had. A, made me a good waiter, though. It made me a very good waiter. Well, it, and you can improv, so, you know, you were getting by. Now, you and your wife, my wife will love hearing this, you and your wife, Dorothea, have been married for 31 years. You're getting a big thumbs up. You get a big thumbs up from Evie over here. She was your high school sweetheart. What, do you remember your first date? Sam and Dave. Uh, you know, so first wow. of all... That's a cool first to, date. But she went along with it, and she got it. And, uh, and so we hit it off, and the soul man just had his 85th birthday. So, yeah, a Sam and Dave concert, 1980, Asbury Park, New Jersey. That was my first date. Now, you guys have four kids now. Uh, they're, all, they're grown, right? What's the, the youngest one is in college or something? No, the youngest is 16. So I guess oh, that's, still, we're... That, that's still at home. Did you guys get a chance? We were very lucky. We, our three kids came and quarantined with us when this all started. Did you guys, get, did you guys all, like, uh, get back together again? Yeah, I had everybody home for about a month, and then the big kid said, we'll take our chances. <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> Same. He said his big kid said, we'll take our chances after about a month. <laughs> Same thing. We held on to him a little bit longer than that, but they're like, you know what? Life <laughs> is a gamble. We're going. <laughs> we made a run for the city, but yeah, I had him for about a month. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That's great. Did you do like the, the, the baking, the cooking, like the, the things that everybody did? Especially Jesse was doing it, our eldest son. You know, yeah. he, he, he and his girlfriend were doing all the baking and the friendship bracelets. And, you know, he watched everything on Netflix that you possibly could. Uh, drank all the Hampton water in the house. Wait, is that, wait, Jesse, is he the one you have the wine company with? It is. It's his wine company. I work for him. But, yeah, we, we were, yeah. I was indulging. It got to the point where I said, I've got to leave something for the rest of America. So I told wait, wait, what, what is the company like? What like what what can I get? 
Oh, the the Hampton Water Rosé Wine Company. It's a it's a hugely successful rosé. The last three years, it's the most honestly the most acclaimed rosé in America. The last three years, a ninety point rating, and wow. he's doing great. Yeah, it's killing it. He's really killing it. So Ham- he took Hampton Water. We have to get some Hampton, Hampton water. water. There's the Catholic guilt right there. We went to he went from Notre Dame, took that business degree, and started yeah. a huge wine company. So <laughs> amen hey, to that. You know who else made wine? Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. Out of water. No <laughs> guilt. Work. No guilt. That's... He's doing the Lord's work. Dang. And you know what? You know exactly where we got it from. And the whole vibe, if you're going to look at the label, you're going to go on it now. And it's white and it goes into pink. And my whole thing was I'm changing water into wine. It's got to exactly, be. It. That's exactly right. Wow. <laughs> uh, wow. I, I love it. That's, that's one of my favorite. It's the first miracle. It's the first yeah. miracle attributed to our Lord. And that's why I'm such a believer, sir. That it Mind. is. It is. Though you dropped out of being an altar boy after a year and a half, but the Lord will forgive yep. you. After a suitable time in purgatory, you'll be fine. You no, know, I, I believe me. I've done my time in purgatory. John, we have to take a quick break, but stick around, everybody. When we come back, I'll ask John how the events of 2020 have influenced his new album, 2020. We'll be right back. 